Well, another day, another dollar. The sack's gonna feel good. Come in. No, I'm waiting for Claire. You got a date at this hour? Yeah, when else? Oh, it'll be young again. See you manana. Later. Hi, Bert. What do you say, Steve? Uh, made it as quiet tonight? Yeah, so, so. Well, hey, Steve, have you found out yet? Found out what? Well, you can take my lineup duty Thursday. See, Myers says he'll switch his Friday with me. So if you can take line up Thursday, then Claire and I can have a long weekend to visit her cousins up at the lake. Yeah, I... I... It's the last weekend she'll have before exams start. Look, you don't have to sell me. It's just I might have to go to court Thursday, Brent. You think I'll ask Raj? I think you ought to be a traffic manager someplace, huh? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Claire. <laughs> have a nice time. Well, you can't park here, miss. It's a police station. Oh, nuts. I thought it was a firehouse. I want to report a fire. Oh, yeah? Well, that's different. Where's the fire? You're a cop, all right. Hi, baby. Where to? Follow that car. Have a hard day at the office, dear? Oh, just the usual. Nothing serious, I hope. No, just a few hatchet murders, stuff like that. I just your father about the weekend. I did. And? And he looked upon the idea somewhat skeptically, shall we say? But he said yes. Hey, great. That's fine. Now, if I can just get Steve to cover the... What's the matter? Make the turn and pull up. Well, what is it? I don't know. But it looks fishy. Oh, quick. That's all there is. Stay here. Let's go. Police officer, stop! I was just holding up the receipts when I heard Helen here kind of gasp, and I looked up, and there they were. I was never so scared in all my life. The tall guy, the one that got away, he said, Mister, don't even breathe, as if he had to tell me. Those guns look like cannons. There, yeah, go on. Huh? Oh, oh, well, then he told me to hand over the money, and I was just about to when he came along. Did they say anything? I mean, did they call each other by name? Well, the big guy, he called the other one Bobby. Then they saw you coming. Boy, you sure dropped him. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Oh. Arella in here? 
Yeah. Froman says we were to ask for Corella. After all. I'm on ahead. Homicide note. Monroe. I just got word a cop was mixed up in a homicide. Yeah, that's me. You got the dope on it? Yeah, right here. It was Robert Matfield. That's two T's. 837 Theron Avenue. Age? 18. 18. He was committing a felony, too. Still has to go to the grand jury, just like for the civilian. Got to ask you some questions, kid. Yeah, sure. Full name? Bertram Kling, with a K. Frank? Detective third. Squad? The 87. You on duty now? Uh, no, I'm off duty. That should do it. If anything else, I'll call you. Don't worry about the grand jury. This is open and shut. Well, back to the salt mines. So long. Listen, you go on home. I'll take care of the rest. Huh? Um, now, come on, Claire's waiting. I'll see you in the morning, huh? We'll work out that lineup thing. Steve, he was just a kid. Yeah, we'll talk about it tomorrow. You go home and get some rest, huh? the other way. Oh. Honey, why don't you go back to the car? I want to walk for a while. I understand. That's your son, Mrs. Matfield? Yes. Put it down. Will you please put that sheet down? May I ask you a few questions, Mrs. Matfield? Are you the one who shot him? No, I'm not. Who? Your son was... Who? Your son was committing a crime. No. Happened. Yes, Mrs. Matthews. No. I'm sorry, but... Don't tell me about my son. Don't tell me what he was committing. I tell you, no. He was my son. I know my own son. Who killed him? What is the name of the man who killed him? Your son was armed and dangerous, Mrs. Matfield. Bobby dangerous? <laughs> oh, please! I'm telling you the truth, Mrs. Matfield. Tonight, he and another man held up a theater box office. Yes, Mrs. Matfield. I'm going home. We'll only have to talk about it some other time. I can understand. I, I don't have to hear lies about my son. Not ever. Well, I told you to hit the sack. Well, I thought I'd better write up my report first. It's the first one of these I've ever had to uh, fill out. If you need any help, I'll be here for a while. Well, I'm just finishing up.
to just put this in on the lieutenant's desk. This door's locked. I'll take care of it. He shot first. You just remember that. It all happened so fast that... Almost seems as if I shot him by reflex. I mean, I wasn't even thinking, Steve. He was shooting, and I shot back. Which is just what you should have done. But he was only a kid, Steve. I mean, what was he, 18? Bert, you're a cop. Sometimes your job... I'm also a human being, Steve. Nobody says you can't be both. I killed a 33-year-old man with a wife and two kids. He also happened to be a burglar, resisting arrest. He came at me with a bread knife. If I hadn't shot him, he would have stuck it in my heart. Bert, nobody, nobody wants to use that damn gun. Well, uh, I thought uh, tomorrow, maybe in the morning, I'd maybe go see his mother. I'd rather you didn't. Why not? Because I just saw her, and she doesn't like the idea of her son being dead. Well, that makes us even. Tonight there was a robbery committed. Both men were armed and dangerous. You killed one of them. Our job now is to find the other man. I don't think you're talking to Bobby Matfield's mother is going to help. Well, I guess you're in charge of this case. Yeah, I guess I am. Okay. Thank you. And Bert, it isn't going to help feeling sorry for yourself. Eighty-seven Squad Corella. Oh, hello, Monahan. Yeah, well, you know how it is. As a matter of fact, he just left. You're writing up his report. No, no, I haven't read it yet. Yeah, well, you probably turned a little green, too, the first time it happened to you, huh? Yeah, I think you'll be all right. Thanks. Stan Burt ran into a little action last night. Double in spades. Is Claire with him? Yep. Now she knows. So does he. Yes. Yes. You say you didn't get the license number. Well, what's your address? Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. That's in the 8 of 6 precinct. Yes. Now, hold on. Hey, Joe. Switch this call to eight of six, will you? Hey, Steve. Yeah. Is it true what I heard downstairs? Well, what'd you hear? Bert had to shoot a guy. Yeah. Tough break. Hello, would you give me your supervisor, please? Yes, this is uh, Detective Stephen Corella, 87th Precinct, 2nd Grade, shield number 7145632. No, 32. Right. 
Yes, I have a telephone number here. I would like the name and address to go with it. And the number is Endicott 29970. Yes, I'll wait. Turn to pay for the donuts. Oh, thanks, Roger. I really don't want any. I didn't ask you what you wanted. I said it's your turn to pay. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Plain of jelly. A uh, plain. Yes. Carol Rodeo. Would you please spell the last name? R-O-D-A-L-E-1151 one, 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 South 41 Street. Yes, thank you. Bert, this girl's telephone number was in Bobby Matfield's wallet. Would you check her out for me while I see Mrs. Matfield? Don't forget, we're still looking for the other man. She might know something. Right. Hey, don't you want your donut? Later. Taking it pretty hard, isn't he? Is there any other way the first time? He'll get over it. You don't get over it. You adjust to it. Miss Rodale? Yes. Who is it? Police department. Would you open the door, please? Uh, can I see your badge? It don't look like a policeman. May I come in? Oh, oh, please. I do something? No, a man was shot last night during the commission of an armed robbery. We found your telephone number in his wallet. My number? If it's, uh, Endicott 29970. Oh, well, yes, that's my number, but... Who is the man? Someone named Bobby Matfield. Bobby? Yes. Did you say Bobby was shot? Yes, he, uh... Oh, well, uh, where is he? Where did they take him? I, I want to see him. Well, he, uh... What hospital did they take him to? Well, can't you tell me that? You must be able to tell me what hospital they took him to. He's dead. What did you say? He was killed resisting arrest. Oh. No. No. No, the, it's not. It's not Bobby. He's not dead. Please, it's not Bobby. I'm uh, sorry. You, you uh, have to forgive me. I don't think you know how I feel. Maybe I do. How could you? I shot him, Miss Rodale. I killed him. Don't, don't make me feel sorry for you, Mister. I don't want to feel sorry for don't you not ask because you. I don't even know you. I don't, I don't know why you shot him. Maybe you shoot people every day. Maybe uh, you're going to get a big promotion for this, or a medal, or please, something. Or maybe please. you're just going to go home tonight. And cry alone in your bed. I don't know. I don't know you, mister. 
You killed one of... one of the nicest human beings I ever knew. I, I want you to go now, mister. Well, I... I have to find out what your connection with him was. Why, he's dead, isn't he? His partner's alive. Maybe you know him. Isn't it enough I know Barbie? Do I have to know all of his friends, too? Miss Rodale, how old are you? I'm 29. Is that all right? Bobby Matfield was only 18. Yes, I know. Policeman. All right, I uh, work at home. I do crochet beading by hand. It's piecework. And, uh... Bobby delivered the work and came to pick it up when it was ready. And that was the extent of your relationship? That's why you cried when I told you? No. I cried because Bobby was a very decent boy who... What do you care? I'd like to know. Well, he, he brought me things. What kind of things? Oh... Just little things. Cheer me up, make me laugh. I'm not... I'm not a very pretty girl, you know. And I've never... Well, men don't... Men like pretty girls, you know. What did he bring you, Miss Rodale? Well... Once he came over and he brought this. You know, things like this. I see. Did you ever go out with him, Miss Rodale? Please, I'm not trying to pry. But maybe sometime, someplace you met the man who was in a hold up with him. No. You see, I'm 29 years old. I thought I told you that. Hello? Bobby? Is that you? Hi. Hi. I'm looking for Mrs. Matfield. She's not here. I just took the key from over the door. Who are you? I'm Terry, Bobby's girlfriend. You always just take the key from over the door and let yourself in? Oh, sure. Bobby's mother works, and so does Bobby, after school. So when I come over, the key's outside, I just use it. They don't mind. Honest. Bobby and I are going steady. He should be here any minute. He works for the Appleton Crochet Bead Company. Well, not full time. He still goes to school. He'll be graduating in January, though. Well, what about you? Don't you still go to school? <laughs> you mean, how come I'm not there now, don't you? Yeah. No, I was sick. I had the flu. I just got out of bed yesterday. Honest. I'll be back in school in a few days. Where do you live, Terry? Near here in the neighborhood? No, downtown. Well, not really downtown. And near the bridge, you know where that is? Yes. It's nice there, don't you think? Yes, I do. Do you believe in kissing on the first date? Oh, I don't know, Terry. I kissed Bobby the first minute I ever met him. Of course, that was different. <laughs> when did you see him last, Terry? Um, yesterday, at my house. I was just up out of bed yesterday, and I really wasn't allowed out yet. What time was it when he left you yesterday, Terry? Mm, almost six, I guess. 
Did he say where he was going? What do you want to know? I know. <laughs> Bobby has his working permit, and he's over 18. And he never cuts classes. He's just always out early on Tuesdays, if you're from the school. No, I'm from the police, Terry. Police? Yes, we picked up somebody last night who said they were with Bobby, and I just wanted oh, to check it no. out. Oh, no. Bobby wouldn't know anyone in trouble with the police. Did he say where he was going when he left you last night, Terry? To a movie. Alone? No, but it wasn't with this fella you picked up, that's for sure. Bobby doesn't hang around with... Who was it, Terry? Do you know? Yes, someone named Carl. Is that the one you picked up? No. <sighs> I didn't think it would be. What was his last name, Terry, this Carl? I don't know. He just said he was going to a show with Carl. He's been seeing a lot of Carl lately. He has a right to his friends, though, as long as they're men friends. Gosh, I wonder where he could be. He's dead. What? Ask him. He'll tell you all about it. Stop him. Unless he decides to get up and shoot back at you. That's a chance I'll just have to take. Bert, you've been to Washington for the FBI, of course, haven't you? I have. You know what they teach their agents? I know. Don't pull it unless you expect to shoot, and when you shoot, shoot to kill. The FBI deals with dangerous criminals. Yeah, what do we deal with, Bert? Schoolboys. Corella on the firing range? No, I'm here. Pick up the extension, will you, Corella? There's a call for you. Right, thanks. You guys finished in there? Yeah, just about. Well, shake a leg, will you? I got people waiting. Wednesday's my busy day. Hello. Danny Kemp, I got your message. Can you talk, Danny? Yeah, I'm alone in my room. What's on your mind? Danny, there was a holdup on Monday night, a theater on... Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Kid got killed, right? Right. We're trying to locate his accomplice. His name may be Carl. Carl what? Well, that's your job. Okay. Let me go on the Erie a little. Uh, I'll give you a ring in a couple of hours. Where are you going to be? Back at the office. Okay, I'll call you there. Oh, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm a little short. I'll take care of it. Thanks. I, I hate to ask. Um, I I'll be talking to you. Come back to the squad? Not yet. There's someone I want to talk to. About this case? Yeah. Who? Not his mother. Don't worry. Sure, Bobby worked for me. For three years, he worked for me. Picking up and delivering the beating, is that right? Yeah, well, you know all the answers. What are you asking me the questions? Three years, you said. Yeah, he was 15 years old when he came here asking me for a job. His father had just died. He was an only child, you know. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. His mother works in the mailing room in a firm downtown. And Bobby figured he ought to help out a little bit. Was he a good worker? The best. Do you know why... Because he was ambitious. He knew how important the buck is in today's society, and he was impatient to get ahead. How much did you pay him? I paid him $2 an hour. And how many hours did he put in each week? 20, 25 hours a week, and that's besides a full school load. Then he was making between 40 and $50 a week. Yeah. Did he ever say anything about wanting more money? Yeah. Sure, he was always asking for a raise. That's why I liked the kid. He had guts. 
No, I meant more money. More money than you could pay him. Mm -hmm. You mean like the money he could get from a robbery, Mr. Kling? Is that what you mean? Mr. Appleton, you said he was ambitious and impatient. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Kling. You don't fool me for a minute, Mr. Kling, because I happen to read the newspapers, and I know who shot and killed little Bobby. So don't ask me about holdups, huh? If Bobby was mixed up in that affair the other night, it was a mistake. You see, Mr. Kling, Bobby was a good boy. The silk stocking he was wearing? It isn't silk. It's nylon. Now, most women's stockings... You know the make? Well, this particular stocking was manufactured by the Nefco Textile Company. They make a quality nylon that's sold in most of the better stores for about uh, $2 a pair. Well, now, that's a break. Yes, but this isn't that stocking. They made a deal with a soap company. With a what? A soap company. That's what it says here. They made a deal to put out a cheaper nylon for the soap people to put into their box of soap flakes as a premium. Would you care to know how many boxes of soap they sold? Don't bother. Well, anyway, this is the nylon that was given with each and every box of soap. Now, I figure if you start checking now, you should be finished by Christmas of 1970. You know, I've always said where would we be without you lab guys? So shoot fellas that can afford more expensive stocking. I'll pass the word. Eighty seven squad gorilla. Uh, this is Meyer. Uh, I've been checking on a stocking that kid wore. Can you come up with anything? Yeah. Couple of bad jokes. You know these lab guys are a laugh a month. Well, the market's flooded with these kind of stockings. It seems they've been giving them out as premiums. You got anything there? No, not yet. I'm just checking the mug file. I'll see you later. It's all in fun. You know that, don't you? Sure. Help yourself. Got a light? It's open. Hi, honey. I thought we were going for a walk. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I don't feel much like it. Okay? Okay. You know, honey... Monday night, when all this happened, I thought how lucky you were. How lucky we both were that Bobby Matfield didn't know how to shoot straight. Because if he did... He was an 18-year-old kid who fired in panic. Oh, well. Well, that's different. Everybody knows the bullets fired in panic can't hurt you. I'm not in the mood for jokes, Claire. You're not in the mood for anything. Bobby Matfield didn't have to kill you. You're doing that yourself. Claire! Now, look, honey, if you hang around here, we're just going to have a big fight. Do you think you have the energy? What do you want everyone to do, Bert? Sit down and ball because you did what you get paid to do? I don't get paid to kill children. You get paid to enforce the law. Sure, a big hundred bucks a week to pump a slug into a kid's Stop belly. Stop it! Hired gunsels get more of the going... Stop it! I, mean, why, I killed him, didn't I? Don't you want to hear all the gory details? I'm sorry, Bert. Honey. It's as if I killed myself. I talked to the people who knew him. It's as if they're describing a kid I used to know. A kid I used to be. This... This kid you used to be, Bert. Did he ever hold up a theater? Carl Dodds. 
solved with intent to kill now. Carl Lathrop and C.C. Carl burglary. No, Derrickson breaking the entry. Steve. Hmm. Hi, hi. How are you, Ben? I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, no, no. I was just looking through the mug file. You look pretty. Steve, I want you to do me a favor. Sure, sit down. I want you to talk to the lieutenant. Bert has some time coming, and I... I thought if he could take it now... Two weeks, even a week. No. What? No, Claire, I won't talk to the boss. Vacation isn't going to help him now. All right, why don't you go ahead and say it? Tough cop, hard cop. Let me tell you something. The first time I killed a man, I went home and I bawled like a baby. Sometimes I wish I worked in a haberdashery, but I don't. I work here, and so does Bert. And I can guarantee you one thing. If Bert quits now, if he runs away from this one, the next man to pull a gun on him is going to kill him. How do you understand me? Only seventh squad, Corolla speaking. Yeah, I'll meet you in 20 minutes, the usual place. I'm sorry, I've got to beat it. Steve, I believe what you say, but but if you could just make Bert sure in his mind that that he had to do what he did, that he didn't didn't lose his head or panic. Claire, if I thought Bert would panic or lose his head, I wouldn't work with him. Now that's. That's all the reassurance I can give. Hi, Danny. Man, you sure handed me a lulu this time. You know how many hoods in this town are named Carl? I only need one. Yeah, but nobody much wants to talk about this one. The rumble has it that your partner shot the kid in the back. The rumble's wrong, Danny. Right, wrong. I'm only telling you what I heard. You know, these guys ain't got too much love for cops anyways. And they ain't in the mood to cooperate when they think... Uh... I don't care what they think, Danny. Okay. You got something for me? Yeah, I think so. A guy I'm talking to mentioned a thief named Carl Harrod. What was the last name? Harrod. H-A-R-R-O-D. You make it? No, I think I... I think I've seen his name in the lousy file. He'd done three years at Castleview for a stick-up, but that was back in 52. Oh, he's been pinched since, but he got off. Anyways, from what I heard, he's back at the old stand. Oh, yeah, I remember his B-sheet now. I didn't pay much attention to it at the time. It said he always worked alone. Yeah, it was in the old days. His M.O.'s changed. He's got a partner now. And from what I heard, they've been pretty busy the last couple of months. Him and his partner must have knocked over a dozen places. They go in with silk stockers pulled over their head, you know what I mean? Is that jibe? That jibes. Where can I find him? Slow down. There's a card game tonight. At 1244 South 15th, apartment 1A. It's an every Wednesday night affair. Poker. You probably know all about it. No. Say, so, hey, I thought you guys knew everything goes on up there. We do. But South 15th is in the 8-8. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I don't like the bulls in that precinct. Yeah, neither do I. What time's the game? Starts at eight bells. Mm -hmm. And from what I heard, Harrod will be there. Leastways, he's been there every Wednesday night so far. Where do you think you can make it? Well, I was planning on having dinner at the White House, but I'll cancel. Oh, to be sure. <laughs>
A pair of ladies, no help, and a possible straight. Now, where do you see a possible straight? Bet the queen. Mm. Two bucks. I'm out. I'll raise you two. And you didn't see a possible straight. Hey, what's the beef? We're having a meeting. They have on every Wednesday night, right? Well, there's no law against social clubs. Law against gambling. Which one of you is Carl Herod? You heard him. Who's Herod? He ain't here. Was he supposed to be here? All right, now listen, boys. This can go as rough or as easy as you like it. And we're not interested in your little game. But unless you cooperate, we might get interested. Now, where's Herod? He didn't show. Does he usually play? Yeah, we always play with the same guys. Where can we find him? Search me. Am I my brother's keeper? Hey! Get up. Why'd you run? I was scared. You know the rat for attempted escape? No, no, no. Look, I, I, was, I was just scared, that's all. And I thought that I could sneak out while everybody was talking. You don't know Herod. I never heard of him. Did you ever play with those boys before? Never. The lie, Wanger. One of them said the same guys always play poker together. Now, you know Herod, and you're running out to tip him off. No, 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 no. How would you like I... to be held as an accessory to armed robbery? You can pull five years for that. Armed robbery? Listen, I didn't oh, have we're anything. Wasting our time. Let's book him. No, 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 no. I, I didn't have anything to do with those stick ups, I swear. Come on, man. Come on. All right, all right. I know Carl. I know him from when we were kids together. I figured that, that if the cops were looking for him, at least I ought to let them know about it. It's no trying to be somebody's friend. Where can we find him? Oh, I, I can't tell you that. Listen, you listen to me, Artie boy. Your friendship story is very touching, but it all adds up to harboring, concealing, and aiding a felony offender. And that means at least five years, Artie boy. Now, you can tell us where he is, and we might forget we ever saw you. Or you can explain it to the grand jury and gamble on five years upstate. Now, how about it? He lives on 18th Street. looking at Bobby Matfield. How'd you... How'd you find me? You want some advice, Herod? Save your strength, you're gonna need it. Don't give me advice, you rotten lassie. <laughs> Was it the kid? Is getting shot. Is that what led you to me? How long have you two been working together? None of your business. Long enough so you should have known better. Turns to shoot. We're in the clear and he stops to shoot. How did Bobby get involved with a prize like you? Nobody gets mixed up unless he wants to. You think Bobby liked that crummy messenger boy job? You think he wanted to spend the rest of his life delivering beads? What did he want, Aaron? What everybody wants. A little loot. A little air to breathe. So he became a thief. <sighs> You're only a thief when you get caught. Big detectives. We knocked off 14 places in two months. You know that. 
I gave that kid five grand to sock in the bank. Five grand. <laughs> Turns around to shoot. Why did he stop, Harrod? Why'd he turn to shoot at me? You want to know why? Maybe he planned it in my cups. Maybe he wanted to see you dead. Bert. Back there in the apartment, when you couldn't pull the trigger, maybe you were looking at Bobby Matfield. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, bless and keep you, and the blessing of the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be with you now and throughout eternity. Amen. Mrs. Matfield? I just wanted to tell you that... with a job, too, Bert. Let's go back to work. <laughs> 